Alright ladies and gentlemen, I am back with you again with another TPU episode. Uh, this time with the brand new Ender 3 uh, V3. Uh, the one with no suffix, uh, Core XZ machine. Um, I got a couple prints here that I have done with that machine. And uh... Yeah, uh, it's turned out quite well. Um, I, I printed another one of these tire stacks, um, same one as I did in the K1. Uh, just so you guys can see a comparison if you are familiar with that video. Uh, we'll get to examining this here later. And then I also printed one of the uh, flexi cones here. Um, so, stick around if you want to see that and see the process. Um, I'm going to have a short time lapse for you today and just a short overview of the settings. Uh, they're heavily based on the K1 settings with some tweaks and adjustments. Um, seems to work really well. It is a little bit slower than the K1, uh, but not too shabby. So if you want to see the end result and uh, learn how to do these kind of prints on your Ender 3 V3 yourself, Stick around to the end, and uh, thanks for joining us today. All right, we're going to start this video off with a quick little overview of the stuff that we need to do to the printer uh, to make this possible. Uh, I do have the Nebula Cam going there, um, so that's how we're going to see the time lapse today. Uh, it'll be quite a bit shorter of a time lapse, uh, to hopefully to keep it a little bit simpler. Um, so... First things first, uh, you definitely cannot do TPU with the PTFE setup at all on this machine. Uh, I tried it a couple different ways, uh, straight through here and through my long tube that I got set up here, and neither option was going to work out very well at all. Uh, it was jamming in the extruder and not pushing through. So this is a new enough machine that nobody really has spool mounts or anything like that made for this machine yet. Um, so I went ahead and in Fusion 360 um, opened up that and made a file. I'm going to share it with all you guys for free on Maker World uh, so that any of you can download it there for free. I also do have it on my Creality print, uh, but I do have it for 100 coins there, so roughly a dollar. So if you guys are interested in this, uh, feel free to download either or. If you want to support the channel, um, either option will help support me a little bit. So um, This is the mount uh, that I designed and made here. Uh, it does use the same inserts as these here. Um, so the spool holder is removable off of that uh, from the factory these two mach these machines have two screw holes uh, one here and one here they will take an M5 screw um, so I utilize that uh, means that the back of this is hollow I couldn't really do something that snapped onto this and I couldn't do something that wrapped into the back because those belts are there these screw holes are designed so they don't interrupt with the belt routing. <clears throat> and then on the back of this printer, um, I can't really show it, so I'll add a picture in here of it. Um, but there is a screw on the back side here uh, that is an M3 screw. So I got one screw in the back. Currently I only have one, but the file is made so it will hold both, screw holes, both screws for stability. Um, this one is a little flimsy. Uh, the file that I released um, is a little bit thicker down here, so it is a bit more sturdy. Um, unravel a little bit of this so I can show you the mount a little bit better. Pretty simplistic design. Um, just go ahead and do three to four walls and then about 15 or 20 percent infill, and you should be rather good on strength on that. Uh, this was my test unit, so it is only two walls and 8% infill. Um, so that's kind of why it's a little wobbly for me, but for the purpose, it's really not even that bad. So, anyway, um, that's the wrap of the overview for the printer. Um, just take the PTFE tube out here. Uh, you can stick a little bit of filament down inside here to hold that um, and route the 
TPU directly into the print head. Uh, as always, you got to leave the little bit of filament in the runout sensor for it to work. Now I'll go ahead and start the time lapse for you guys, and I'll go through the print settings for you. Alright, so this time lapse is a little bit shorter than I wanted, but we can uh, go ahead and get right into the settings here. I'll try to be quick with it, and then we'll get to some images and going through the finished product here. So from the carried over from the K1 settings that I have prior, uh, the layer height uh, with the detail that I wanted on this, I stuck with the 0.15. Uh, on this machine, I did do the 0.2 layer height. And this is all um, on the V3. I am still using Creality Print. Uh, so a lot of the stuff will be different than Orca Slicer, but all pretty close to the same uh, concept of this stuff. Most of the other stuff in the quality tab is pretty well default uh, as far as all that goes uh, when we move over to the shell for TPU especially for this I did a two wall line count uh, four top and bottom layers do not alternate extra walls as far as Z seam sharpest corner and hide seam uh, seems to work out quite well on this Moving on to infill, uh, this one I did do 10% infill, trying to make it a little bit more pliable than the last one that I had set on 20. This one is a lot more spongier. If you're doing something like this tire carrier holder device, a 15% is probably going to be a better ideal. Again, the infill is going to be completely dependent on you know what sh what your finished project is gonna be so the 20 was extremely stiff uh, very hard to flex the 10 uh, kind of show you here I can pretty much you know squish this thing any way that I want uh, even just through the wall side which is kind of what I wanted on this one so uh, cubic infill, as always, any infill that is going to give you an even distribution. You don't want something that's going to be uneven, otherwise it's just going to feel strange, uh, basically. Nothing else as far as infill goes besides infill layer combination. Uh, pretty much always check that. Speed. Speed is the important one. Uh, print speed, I did 120 millimeters on this machine. Infill speed, 120. Outer wall speed, I did go to 84. On the inside contours, I, I did test a little bit higher speeds than this. I tried going to 90, and I started pulling away on inside contours. So I would likely cap this at 70 to 80 is probably what I'd cap this if you're trying something that doesn't have a lot of inside curves 80 should be fine if you're doing something with a sharp or long about this size here inside radius I would probably stick closer to that 70 range that's just gonna help keep everything together Inner wall speed, I did go to 100, uh, trying to keep everything together instead of doing the 120 on this machine. It seems to work well. Uh, skin speed, uh, I left all that at 80. Travel speed, obviously doesn't matter a whole lot. Jumped it up to 500, called it good. Initial layer, I did do 40 on this one. Uh, likely could take that up a bit faster not really going to affect a whole lot. Number of slower layers, only two. Supports, obviously use as little supports as possible. Removing so supports from TPU is nigh impossible. Extremely, extremely difficult. Temperatures means I was similar speeds as my K1. I did go to 230. Uh, it is pretty well the same as what I do on the K1. 
Uh, as far as looks of it and everything like that, 230 is perfectly fine. This does have that unicorn nozzle in it. Uh, 60 build plate. Again, PEI plate. Coat that thing with, uh, with the purple Amazon Basics glue stick. And that will make your part release quite easy. Cooling. Pretty well default cooling for the TPU settings. 100% fan speed uh, for most of the print. Um, really no reason to drop it lower. It, it All it does is help TPU. Uh, there's no reason to lower that at all. Uh, line widths, uh, 42 and 45, pretty well standard as line width. Line widths go. Uh, there is no no signs of over extrusion on the top surface. I do have a little bit of signs of under extrusion. Uh, I did only go to 108% flow ratio. Now, mind you, on the K1. I do have the diamond back nozzle. I have it set to 110. I did have a little bit signs of over extrusion on 108 and this nozzle on this machine. I do show, like I say, a little bit of signs of under extrusion on my top layers. So what I would do is leave everything at 108 because the rest of the print looks absolutely fantastic as far as top and bottom, go, or as far as bottom and the walls go. I would bump up your top surface flow a couple degrees to 102 to 103 percent and that should alleviate any of that issue at all uh, build plate adhesion uh, you don't really need any with tpu uh, so basically have that set to none and everything else is gonna be your standard settings uh, reduce your attraction a little bit and reduce that retraction speed just a little bit. This you kind of got to experiment with. Um, I dropped it down just a couple points, nothing major. And I have, as you can see, a very, very minimal stringing inside this thing. I've already went through with the torch in here. Um, but yeah, just drop it a couple tenths, and that's really all you have to do. So as far as all of that goes, uh, that is pretty well the basics of printing TPU on the V3. It did extremely well. Uh, quite impressed for an open machine. Like I say, time-wise, did take a bit longer. Uh, this tire stack is a little bit larger than the original one. And again, like I say, I mean, I can flatten this thing both ways. And that's that 10% infill but it pops right back into openness there. Um, can't really see inside. I'll try to show some pictures. Um, but as far as tread quality, etc., goes here, this is in line, if not slightly a little bit better as far as the finish quality on here goes, as it did in my K1, likely due to dropping that to 108% flow ratio instead of 110%. Extremely, extremely, extremely close. Really not much, much messing around, but anyway, I will link the mods that I installed here in the description below, uh, both to the Creality Print and the Maker's World accounts that I have. And then, uh, of course, I will link the TPU that I used here. Um, I will go ahead and link the V3 if you guys are interested in purchasing a V3. And again, I will also link the glue that I use uh, so you can get these parts back off of that PEI sheet without destroying that. So thanks all for watching. If you, if you found this video helpful at all, please give me a like um, and feel free to subscribe. I will have the subscription right here and what YouTube thinks is the next best video for you to watch next right here. Thanks much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.